here among a caring group of people who have gathered to be inspired and lifted by Christ so that we might go and care for others. Uh, a couple of announcements that we want to share with you. Uh, hopefully all of you have remembered that today is our congregational meeting. Uh, it'll be right here in the sanctuary uh, after service. You have time to run down, get a cup of coffee and a donut if you want. But it is important, I'm told the magic number is 70, uh, to create a quorum. We're uh, adopting uh, our constitution that has been brought up to date. And we hope all of you have maybe had a chance to look it over. But even if you haven't had a chance to look it over, please come. We do need uh, a quorum to get this business done. And it's important work of the church. So that's uh, today. Uh, hopefully uh, you saw the announcements in the e-news of Pastor Scott Peterson uh, has been appointed as our new interim pastor and will be with us the first of the year. Uh, part of uh, what we're, he lives uh, in Madison, Alabama, um, so part of what we are wanting to hope provide for him is a place to stay while he's here with us uh, serving the congregation. So um, we think we have found a little one bedroom place, but it needs some furniture. So right now we're looking for an electric clothes dryer, some living room seating, a love seat, a small uh, sofa chair, some things like that. If you have maybe some gently used and some uh, possibility, just give Janice a call at the office so we can kind of get that set up for Pastor Peterson. He will be a real blessing to this congregation. Um, thanks to everybody who has donated to the angel tree. Uh, I see that all uh, people got adopted. We remind you that today is the day that we want to have all those donations in uh, for the angel tree so that we can deliver them before Christmas. Um, don't forget that this evening our children, not only are we playing chimes for us this morning, but this evening at 6 o'clock is uh, our children's Christmas pageant. Uh, and I always said it is not Christmas until you hear children sing away in a major. So uh, please come out and support our kids and put a smile on their face. Not everybody in the church is a child. We have some older ones as well. And so I want Richard to maybe share the opportunity we have for the men of the congregation. Absolutely. We need you, men, for men's Bible study. Uh, we have great fellowship. We have a great time together. We learn and grow in Jesus and his Father God. And as Pastor Rick Warren says, he, some of you know him, but he is the author of The Purpose Driven Church, The Purpose Driven Life. And he says, you only grow through family. We are a church family. So we need you to join together in, in men's Bible study. This is for men. But we need to join together to learn and grow in him. Because you can't, won't, and don't do it by yourself. God says in Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. That is God's word. So January 4th, we start study of The Case for Christ by Lee Strobel. Lee Strobel is an excellent, uh, wrote an excellent book. It's all about the truth of Jesus, the Gospels, the Bible. Lee Strobel is a legal, count, legal journalist for the Chicago Tribune. He was an atheist turned Christian. And if you know anything about atheists who turn Christian, they have powerful stories. So Janu uh, starting January 4th, there at Christ the Lord, 7 to 10, we'll meet here. We will have uh, good COVID precautions in place uh, to keep you safe. Um, contact me, Richard Burgess. My contact information is in the bulletin. Call, text, or email. I have a book for you and hope to see you Tuesday the 4th. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. A um, couple of things that are happening. Uh, this coming Wednesday evening uh, at 6.30 is uh, our annual Blue Christmas service. We know that for many, this holiday is a difficult time. Uh, uh, today in our lesson, we hear rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. We know for some people, that's a little hard. So this is an opportunity to come together and to kind of center in Christ and find that joy, even in the midst of some difficult days. So that's this Wednesday at 6.30. Um, we will be decorating the sanctuary uh, after the fourth Sunday of Advent. This is number three, so after uh, next Sunday. And we need some help, some willing hands, some elves to help us prepare the church for Christmas Eve. So if you'd like to 
help with that, please just let us know on the back of your attendance sheet. Remember in front of you, there are those little family attendance sheets. If you'll fill those out and put them in the offering plate when they go around, we would ask everyone to help us out with that. Um, also, uh, the nursery is open and available if it's helpful to you. Uh, kids, there are activity bags in the back as you enter church if you would like one of those as well. Um, and then uh, finally, I would want you to say there's lots of information uh, in our bulletin, so please uh, read that and be prepared. There's lots of things going on here at Christ the Lord, and uh, we would like your presence and, of course, need to be there for each other. Oh, one more thing. Uh, someone gave me one of these. Uh, next Sunday is the deadline to order poinsettias uh, to decorate the for Christmas. So if you'd like to donate in memory or honor of someone, just fill this out, drop it in the offering plate. That's, that's helpful to us as well. We have come to this place to praise our God and to draw strength from his holy word and sacrament. Would you rise as you were able as we begin our time of worship with the order of confession and forgiveness? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who alone does wonders, who lifts up the lowly, and who fills the hungry with good things. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the tender mercy of our God, God for whom we wait. In the presence of one another, we confess our sin before you. We fail in believing that your good news is for us. We falter in our call to tend in your creation. We find our sins of self and material wealth. We fear we are those who differ from ourselves. We forget that we are your children and turn away from your love. And you forgive us, bless us one, and assure us of the end of your saving grace. Amen. God, in Christ Jesus, has looked upon you with favor. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. You are children of the Most High. Inheritors of the eternal promise and recipients of divine mercy, God strengthen you anew to follow the way of peace. Amen. Gathering him is two forty eight. Praise you. 
first reading is taken from the third chapter of Zephaniah. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressions at that time, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you home, at the time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised, praised among all the peoples of the earth, when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord, word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. God is a never-ending source of joy. If we follow and live in the light of God, we will be sustained through the darkest night and know that joy can defeat hopelessness. We light these candles today as a sign of this deep and abiding sense of joy. Sorrow and sighing shall flee away. And so we offer this mysterious prayer. Lord Jesus, we come. Likewise. 
Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we? What should we do? And he said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusations, and be satisfied with your wages. The people were filled with expectation. And all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah. John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. The chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So, with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people, the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise. Would you pray with me this morning? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may the words of my mouth and the whispering of our hearts. Find favor in your presence, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Again, today on the third Sunday of Advent, a voice cries in the wilderness, Repent! Take a new direction! Change! John the Baptist, this ancient Old Testament prophet who begins the New Testament era, carries forward the message that this Messiah who is coming, not him, but the one who is coming, is coming to change things, and in fact, change lives. How does that work? Last week I talked to you a little bit about that repentance may include feeling a sense of regret or sorrow over how we have failed to live as the people of God, but that repentance is not just about how we feel about our past, but it is about how that is going to lead to a change in the future. As John says to the people, this Messiah who is coming is changing your life in order that you bear fruit, that there be something new growing in your life. So how does that transformation take place? How are we changed by the coming of Jesus Christ into our lives? The first step is humility. For if we are filled with pride, like some who came to John, proclaiming that as children of Abraham, we are already God's children, they came to him scribes and Pharisees who said, oh, but we know the word of God better than anyone else. Or, we keep the 613 rules of the Torah, so we are better than those publicans, those tax collectors, those sinners. And to those, John says, you brood of vipers. To be changed requires a humble heart. It requires that you and I understand that it is not the work of our hands, the wisdom of our mind, even the depth of our faith that grants us a place at God's holy table. But that God has made us his children through water and spirit, through God's action in our lives, without any goodness or righteousness on our behalf, as Luther says. God comes to us while we were sinners and still says, you are my child. We are humble because we know that we can't judge another, for we ourselves have been granted such grace by a loving God. Humility requires of us the recognition that we can be wrong. But the way we have thought about God, the way we have thought about one another, may be an error. And so in the humble heart, we come to God and we ask God to renew grace within us in order that we might change. That we have not yet come to a fullness of what it means to be a child of God. 
We are still growing disciples every day of our life. And God shows us new ways to love and new ways to care. Humility. Nor can we change if we want to, if we continue to carry the guilt of the past. We cannot open ourselves to new ways if our focus is on how we have failed in the past. Because having failed in the past, we burden ourselves with the load of sinfulness. And there is not room for us to change. That humility they have cannot drive us into despair. But to a faith that God can change us. That God has the power to renew us and to lift us up. That God has the power through Jesus Christ's life, death, and resurrection to remove from us that of the past so that we can not look to who our fathers are, but to who our Father is and the path forward. It is acknowledging that we are powerless against sin, but that there is a power who can overcome sin for us, that leads us to the hope of this season, that we can be new people, that we can live new and fuller lives in Jesus Christ, that every day has the opportunity to rise anew and to be more and more whom God has called us to be in the water and the spirit. Humility, forgiveness, and then the assurance that the place we have in the family of God will never be taken from us. That this gift that we have been given is ours. Yes, we can say no. God forces his love on no one. But God's love is there always for us. There is nothing that we have done that will ever take us out of the hands of the loving God. There is nothing that we will ever do that can take us out of God's loving hands. Our life today and tomorrow and throughout all the days of our lives is secure in the loving presence of God. Therefore, we do not need to face the future with fear or worry about ourselves, but instead can be transformed into people who look not to themselves but to others. Isn't that what John says? When the people, the crowds, the tax collectors, and the soldiers come to him and say, well, what should we do? And his answer is, stop looking at yourself. Right now you are practicing, says John, ways that improve your life at the expense of another. Stop looking at how you get more for you, and instead look at what your neighbor needs. If your neighbor needs a coat and you have two, give them one of yours. If your neighbor is hungry and you feast at your table, then give up your bounty to what God can use to feed those who are hungry. If you're a tax collector, then just take what's due you. Don't use your position to take more for you from another who is in need. And if you have authority and power like the soldiers who accompanied those tax collectors, don't use your power and authority to subject someone else, but instead to lift someone else. This transformation of our humility, this transformation of our forgiveness, is the transformation that allows us, with the security of God's love in our life, to no longer worry about us. Instead, show concern and care for another. Because when we look around and we see others in need, we find the path of how we say thank you to God. Hey, how do you say thank you for the God who literally has given you life? How do you say thank you for a God who has forgiven you your sins fully and completely? How do you say thank you to God who has written your name in the book of life and guaranteed your salvation and your eternal life? How do you say thank you? Jesus says in Matthew 25, it's easy. You want to say thank you to me? When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. 
When I was naked, you gave me clothes. When I was isolated in prison or sick in a hospital, you came and you visited. And the saints in that passage in Matthew 25 say, wouldn't you do that? And God says, whenever you did, to a new person. That's the transformational life. That's where that joy comes from that Paul and the Old Testament talk about. The joy that sometimes is elusive in our lives and in this season. That may be filled with bright lights, but in our hearts there are clouds and shadows. How do we find the joy? Not by putting on a happy, smiley face and pretending everything is great. It is by recognizing that we have nothing, but God has given us everything. We find that joy by being free from all those thoughts that pull us back into despair and, and guilt and shame. We find that joy when we know that we and our life is secure in Jesus Christ. We find that joy when we no longer look to ourselves. The look into God's world and said, how can I bring God's love, God's light, God's hope into a life of another? In these days of Advent, as we reflect upon God's call to us to repent, to take a new direction, may the God who came to us in water and spirit send, send that same spirit to open our hearts and open our minds, and open our eyes. And by growing as God's disciples, discover the joy that comes into a darkened world. In the name of the creator, the redeemer, and the sanctifier.
waters of baptism, we have been made people of God. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him in all things to reign. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In our faith, we come before our God and offer prayers. We especially remember this morning those of whose needs we've been made aware. Laura Bacon, George Bucas, Jim Castillo, Delana Ball Clay, Mickey D'Amato, Mark Edwards, Jim Green, Doris Gustafson, Sally Hipsley, Jack Langren, Dottie Matt, Jamie Smith, Darlene Swain, Leighton Stahl, Rod Talon, Samantha Welch, Leroy White, Lee Witt, Rose Woodside, Linda Yergin. And we ask God's comfort upon the family of Marty Straub Sandheim, uh, who has entered eternal life. And of course, we remember the victims and those who have died in the recent storms in Kentucky. As we await the coming of Christ, we pray and hope for the church, the world, and all creation. Lord of light, bless your church. As the world grows darker with each day, let your people grow brighter with love, hope, joy, and peace in this Advent season. Turn us from our wish list to the list of needs for those who suffer. Show us how to live more fully the light we have been given in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of light, bless the nation. Bring peace between people, hope to those who suffer injustice, joy to those weighed down by the cares of the world, and love to those who feel alone, especially at this time of the year. Keep safe those in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of light, bless your disciples this day with the new life given to us through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son. Let the repentance of our hearts lead to actions of mercy in our lives. Renew our baptism and feed us with the bread of heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of light, hear our thanks for the blessings we have received. Thank you for daily bread, for caring family and friends. Thank you for our new interim pastor, Pastor Scott. Lead us into a mission that is now ours. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of light, bless those who cry out to you for healing and wholeness. Hear our petitions for Laura, George, Jim, Delana, Mickey, Mark, Jim, Doris, Sally, Jack, Dottie, Jamie, Darlene, Layton, Ron, Samantha, Leroy, Lee, Rose, Linda, those who have been suffering the storms, and to those we name before you in our hearts. In this pandemic, with the light of the new year, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of light, bless those who have died in the faith and now rest in you, especially Marty. Bless the families that grieve throughout Kentucky and other states after the tornadoes. 
Bring comfort to those who mourn with the promise of an everlasting feast to come. Until that day, may our memories and your promise sustain us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Confident that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we bring to you these prayers and those unspoken. In the name of Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Also be you. Let us share the peace as you are comfortable. They're playing at the pageant tonight. You can get out. The pageant's at 6 o'clock, and it's always a lot of fun. The kids dress beautifully in their costumes and work really hard with their lines and stuff. So they're going to play this morning, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Almighty and merciful God, 
through our Savior Jesus Christ, you comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus, for whom we wait. Amen. Amen. Christ is near. Thank you. Thank you.